Hey everyone, uh, we're going to take the unit five lesson eight notes in your Desmos workbook. Um, we're on page 12. Let me write that up here for you. And so what we're looking at right now is multiplying and dividing both positive and negative numbers. Um, luckily, since multiplication and division are essentially the same operation, um, they follow the same rules. So if you already know the rules for multiplication um, in terms of you know, a negative times a negative is positive, negative times positive is negative, all that stuff. Well, if you know those rules for multiplication, then you already know them for division because they're exactly the same. Um, so let's look at this table that we have here on uh, page 12. It should um, sort, sort of look familiar because it's kind of looks like proportional relationship tables. It's not. Um, but, you know, it kind of is, kind of isn't, they're similar. So what we have here is three different turtles and their rates. So like how fast they're going. Rates are always in some unit per some other unit. So this rate is in feet per minute. And you'll notice that a couple of these turtles, or maybe even all of them, I don't know, we haven't figured out the last one, have negative rates, that doesn't mean that they're like somehow traveling negative feet per minute. That doesn't even really make any sense. The negative sign in this um, context is just meant to denote that they're going in the negative direction on the number line. If you think back to the lesson, all these turtles are on these like number lines with positive and negative on them. And here in the, this, this column here, I guess we call this the third column, is the amount of time that the turtles have traveled for. And then in the last column is their final position wherever they end up at. Um, well, there's a little formula or equation that you may or may not know at this point. Rate times time. And so I'm gonna use a dot here to mean times, times time. So the, um, the quantity in this column times the quantity in this column equals distance. Usually the way you learn this formula is distance. But in this case, distance and position are the same thing, right? Because the turtles always start at zero. How far they go is also their position. If they go 12 feet, they'll wind up at 12 or negative 12. So I'm going to write distance up here. But I'll also write slash or position. Same thing in this case. So what that means is if we take the quantity in the first column, multiply it by the quantity in the second column, um, we get the quantity in the third column. So let's see here, negative three times 2.5. I'm gonna do some sort of handwritten notes or handwritten calculations I mean over here. And so when I'm doing multiplication with decimals involved, I try to break things into pieces and see if that helps me. So this is going to kind of look like the distributive property. If you're familiar with that, it kind of is, it kind of isn't. So what I'm doing here is negative three times two, that gets me a negative six. And then let me switch colors. I'm going to do negative three times the 0.5. So what I have is 0.5 plus 0.5, that gets me one whole. And then plus one more 0.5, that's 1.5. Oh, but it's negative 1.5 because I'm doing negative three times 0.5. And so negative six plus negative 1.5 gets me a negative 7.5. Honestly, you don't even really have to go do, do all this. If you know that three times 2.5 is 7.5, then all you have to do at that point is just remember the rule that a negative times a positive gets you the negative product, right? Or negative answer. So, um, so this turtle's final position is negative 7.5. All right, and so now we have to think of in terms of inverse operations. Remember at the beginning of this video, I said that multiplication and division are essentially the same operation. They really are. But one thing that we can use them both for is the fact that they work in inverse of each other. If you know that three or negative three, I mean, times 2.5 equals negative 7.5, well, you can also divide back to get either of the other two numbers you started with, your original factors. Negative 7.5 divided by 2.5 would get you this negative three. Or 
you could do negative 7.5 divided by negative three would get you this 2.5. So you can work inverse of your multiplication, right? That's what we mean when we say inverse operations. If we can multiply these two numbers to get this one, then we can divide our way back to our original factors. And so that's how we're gonna find these two missing factors here is through division. This one here is going to be negative 23 divided by negative two. So I'm setting it up over here just, just to do it by hand for fun. All right, so negative two goes, in, goes into negative two one whole time. So I'll put a one up here. One times negative two is negative two. But it's, uh, actually no, we'll do it this way. Let's subtract down. So this is a little bit weird. I'm subtracting negative two minus negative two any number minus itself is always gonna be zero, right? Three minus three is zero, 10 minus 10 is zero. Well, that same thing is true for negative numbers. Negative two minus negative two is zero. So this three here, we gotta be kind of careful though. So this is where it gets weird kind of doing this with negatives. In fact, I kind of wish I just left the negatives out because we know our answer is gonna turn out positive, right? We know that a negative divided by a negative should be a positive because it follows the same rules as multiplication. And so when I bring down this three here, it's a little bit weird. I have to remind myself that this three was part of negative 23. So it's really a negative three I brought down. And now negative two can go into negative three one whole time. And then I could go in some more steps in this, um, in this division, but I know that negative two can go into negative three one and a half times, right? I'm good. When I put the negative two in there one time, I have one left over and that's half of two. So I'm just gonna skip a step and I'm gonna write that the answer is 11.5. If you're shaky on this or it's really weird for you because I threw all the negatives in there, then you can use a calculator if you like. But really all I did was 23 divided by two and then I knew that the answer had to be positive because the two numbers I was dividing was negative. All right, and then the last one, let's see here. I'll keep sticking with this purple. Here I have 11 divided by negative two. I know my answer is gonna come out negative because I've got a positive divided by a negative. Now here's another way that I can think about doing these divisions. I can break 11 into two pieces. I can break it into 10 and one, right? 10 plus one is 11. Well, if I divide 10 by two, I get a five. And then if I divide that one by two, well, that's a half. One divided by two is a half. So I could write this as five and a half or 5.5. Let's go, let's go five and a half. I don't usually use mixed numbers. We can mix it up and use some mixed numbers. All right. So it says, describe your strategy for calculating turtle B's time. Well, to find the time from a, I want to say distance, even though these numbers are position, what, what they, what this position really represents is their distance from zero. And this is such a common equation or formula that you should all like really learn this or know this, this whole um, rate times time equals distance. This is a really important equation like in science and math. And so I'm gonna use the word distance here. To find the time from a distance and rate, sorry, I just kind of hit my computer. Do distance divided by rate equals Time. All right, so up here I wrote that rate times time equals distance. And then what we're doing for B is working backwards from that. That means we can take the distance divided by the rate and figure out how much time was going. A really simple example of this would be if you were going 60 miles an hour for two hours and you wanted to figure out how far you could go, well, you would do 60 miles an hour, your rate times your time for two hours, and you've gone 120 miles per hour. But if I told you, hey, you went 120 miles an hour and you did it going 60 miles an hour, 
how long did that take you? Well, you could find that time by doing the 120 miles per hour divided by, sorry, the 120 miles divided by the 60 miles per hour and get the two hours time, right? So um, that's essentially what we're doing here, which is a little bit different numbers. And so what we really did was negative 23 divided by the negative two that they gave us. I'm thinking about this column there, this row here equals 11.5. All right, and then number two actually has this really interesting question that comes up in my class every year about negatives on fractions and like what you're allowed to write and what equals what. And so um, what I wanna do is I wanna show you all the different possibilities of putting negative signs on fractions and show you which ones are equal because they're all negative and which ones are equal because they're all positive. And that's, that's just what we'll write for this part. So, so we're gonna make like two categories of fractions. I'm gonna put over here on the left, I'm gonna put some fractions in orange. And these fractions are all negative. So negative eight, no, I don't like the way I wrote that. I'm gonna start over. It's, it's really important that I write these very clearly for you so you see what I'm talking about. So negative eight over two is the same as eight over negative two, which is the same as negative sign in front of eight over two. I'm gonna like bubble all these together and I'm gonna write, these are all negative. So these are all the exact same numbers, three different ways to write the exact same number. Because what you have here is the number negative eight divided by positive two. Remember a fraction just means take the top number and divide by the bottom number. So negative eight divided by positive two would get you negative four, right? Well, here you have a positive eight divided by negative two that would also get you negative four, right? Because here you have a negative and a positive, and here you have a positive and negative. Those two things combine to make negative each time. And then in the last one, this is probably the most common way you see these types of fractions written. What you have here is eight divided by two, which is four, but the negative sign in front sort of indicates you want the negative version of eight divided by two. Well, eight divided by two is four, negative equals negative four. So I'm gonna put also over here, um, maybe along this line, all equal negative four. But let's look at the other ways you could write or the other like combinations of negative signs you could have here. What if I wrote it as negative eight over negative two? Well, that would be equal to just eight over two. I'm gonna circle these two. So these two are separate from the ones in the other box or the other bubble. These are both positive. Because well, obviously positive eight over positive two is positive four, right? That one's easy to understand. This one here though, when you double up on the negatives, there's lots of different ways people like to say this or think about it. The negatives cancel each other out or a double negative makes a positive or whatever. What's really happening here is you're writing negative eight divided by negative two. A negative divided by a negative results in a positive. And so these all equal positive four. I don't normally put a plus sign in front of my numbers to indicate they're positive, but I just wanted to emphasize this time. So there's all the different poss possible combinations. These ones turn out negative. These ones turn out positive. All right, um, sorry if that's a little bit hard to see everything I wrote there. I'll zoom out a little bit in case there's any part of my work that you missed that you wanna get copied. And that's it.